If shoe size is correlated with reading levels for elementary school children, can we say that foot growth causes improvements in reading ability? In this lesson, you will learn how to avoid the assumption that correlation implies causation by evaluating language used to explain statistical results. Let's review. You have learned that correlation between two variables can sometimes be the result of a linking or lurking variable. A linking variable acts between the two variables and links the action of variable 1 to the action of variable 2. A lurking variable acts in the background, causing the changes in both variable 1 and variable 2. Suppose we have data about reading level and shoe size, and we calculate the correlation coefficient as 0.91. What can we say about this relationship? We must be really careful in interpreting a correlation because people often make errors in this important step. Specifically, people tend to suggest causality when they do not have evidence of a causal relationship. In our reading example, can we say that foot growth leads to improvements in reading? Obviously not. Here it's clear that we have implied causation. Can we say that as children's feet get larger, their reading scores tend to improve? Yes, this careful wording does not imply that a change in one variable is causing the change in the other, only that the two variables are moving together. Is it appropriate to say that shoe size is correlated with reading level? Yes, this generic language is always safe to use because it does not imply causality. How about an increase in the size of the shoe leads to an increase in the reading level? No way. The word leads definitely implies that a change in shoe size is causing the change in the reading scores. Now let's try the same exercise in a situation where it's more tempting to suggest causality. Suppose a sample of people are questioned about how often they meditate and their blood pressure is measured. If the correlation between these two variables is negative 0.84, what can we conclude? Can we say that meditation causes a reduction in blood pressure? No, because this clearly implies causality. Is it okay to conclude that increased time spent meditating is associated with decreased blood pressure? Sure, this way of presenting the results is appropriate because it does not imply causality. Saying that the number of minutes spent meditating is correlated with blood pressure is also an appropriate way to present the results but saying that an increase in the number of minutes spent meditating results in a decrease in blood pressure is not okay because causality is definitely implied. Remember that correlation does not imply causation. If X is correlated with Y, it might be the case that X causes Y, and it could also be the case that Y causes X. Two other scenarios consistent with the correlation between X and Y are as follows. First, there might be a linking variable that acts between x and y. Second, a lurking variable could be acting in the background, causing the changes in both x and y and making it appear as though one of these variables is causing a change in the other. In this lesson, you have learned how to avoid the assumption that correlation implies causation by evaluating language used to explain statistical results.